Hello, and I'm back. So, if you watched the first video, I said I was going to get into some more details about uh, strategies for finding the 240 solutions to the uh, Soma Cube puzzle. And uh, one of the great things you can look at, and uh, you'll find this in the links as well, is uh, from Thoroughly's Soma News page. It's a reprint of a section of Winning Ways for Your Mathematical Plays by Berlin Camp, Conway, and Guy. And uh, if you're familiar with mathematics and the people of mathematics, John Conway uh, is considered to be one of the most brilliant mathematicians of the 20th century. And I believed he had the chair at Cambridge, the same one that Sir Isaac Newton sat. Um, I might be wrong. You can look it up. Anyway, uh, what this is about is about applying simple mathematical ideas to uh, get some insight into how the Soma puzzle works so that you don't waste time looking for solutions where there might not be. Any. So, the very first thing they talk about is actually quite simple, and it's based on what is a cube, what are the uh, properties of a cube, and a cube has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 corners, or vertices. So, if we look at each piece to see how many uh, vertices can be contributed by each piece, we might learn something interesting about where they can go. So let's just look at them one at a time. So this piece, if it were sitting on an edge, could contribute two, or it could be in the middle and it could contribute zero. There isn't really any option, other option for this one. It could contribute two, or be in the middle somewhere and contribute zero. So this one is two. Well, here's another one that could do two if it's on an edge, but if you flipped it like that, it could be uh, a one, or it could be like that and it could be a zero. So this one is zero, one, or two. All the rest of the pieces can really only contribute one. So at the very best, any one of the remaining five pieces can contribute one. So we have this, five. And let's just try something here. Let's uh, go five plus two plus three plus zero. Well, that's seven. So this piece can never be zero. Well, okay, so anyway, in that single instance anyway, it wouldn't have worked. So let's go five, one, zero. Well, that's six, again, it doesn't work. So we pretty much are gonna have to count on this one always contributing two. So that means this always has to be on an edge. So that means now that the sum of puzzle is actually a five piece puzzle. This always has to be at an edge. So, and then getting back to the idea about unique solutions, if I have, I hope that's a satisfying explanation. I know I could probably have done something on a blackboard that was a bit more illustrative, but again, this will be in the links and you can have a look. So let's build this solution again and get back to talking about what unique means. So I have this solution. And now if I take this solution and I flip it like this, that is not unique, or at least in the way we're talking about unique, it is not. It is a, that is a rotation of the same solution. So unique would be from, from here anyway. This is one unique solution. If I take this out, oh, I would have to. 
just trying to set myself up for easy, unique solutions. So this is a unique solution. And so is this. This is a unique solution. So anyway, that's the things we're looking for for a unique. But as interesting as the vertices, the, the analysis of the vertice contribution is, Conway guy and Berlin Camp take this even further. By the way, he's not at this email address anymore. This is from a very, very long time ago. I believe the 1990s. So anyway, they take it even further. I mean, if you can go through that sort of analysis of what the vertice contributions are of all the parts, then, well, a cube is made of vertice, edges, faces, and in our case, there's a piece in the center called the center. So, rather than go through a, a really laborious sort of setting up all the possible combinations, uh, the authors have come up, came up with this rather ingenious idea of checkerboarding the cube. So each cube in a solution is a different color. So this would be like, well, what they suggested using was flame for the 14 favored cells of face and vertice and emerald, so basically red and green. They're they're kind of they're kind of prosaic dudes. So um, and then for the uh, emerald green for the edges and the center. So basically, you've checkerboarded a solution. So now if you go through that and you look at what the contributions of all the pieces are, well, it's got to add up to, to 14 for the faces, vertices, and edges, faces and vertices, and 13 for the edges and centers. And whatever the contribution is of a piece in a solution, it's as far as faces, edges, and centers, it's always going to have to be that in every solution. Here we say must. <laughs> um, they do not go through a laborious proof to, uh, to explain why this must be true, but it does lead to some, uh, some interesting possibilities as far as further limiting uh, the solution tree. I assume that since uh, I believe it was Conway and Guy were able to find 240 unique solutions one rainy afternoon, I still would really like to see somebody do that. Um, and that, that uh, concurs with uh, the best computer searches that there are only 240 unique solutions that they must be right. So from that, let's get these out of the way, um, they came up with this table of pieces and their possible positions. These are the only positions that the pieces can be in if you use this table. It would quicken your, uh, uh, your, it would reduce the amount of time you would spend trying to find a solution because you would never put a part in a situation that it, it's not a lot. Well, that's all well and good. And again, well, and then on this same, uh, on the same link, they have the, uh, the solutions. Um, I prefer my method of recording solutions on a cube grid, of course, but then I'm just me. So here was my idea. And uh, I know I talked about reflections before and how, uh, how are you going to keep, you know, you find a solution, you find a couple more solutions. Do you have to check back and check back to make sure that it isn't a reflection due to these pieces being reflections of each other? So what I thought would be interesting is to take 
this piece, the violet piece, which is the most symmetrical of all the pieces. So it's going to have the fewest number of uh, permutations throughout the cube and then limit it to one side of the, uh, of the cube. And then my thought was that that would, that would uh, allow it to, uh, would allow me to go through a lot of solutions and once this one's exhausted, go to the next one and build up a tree like I'd shown uh, a tree graph on the uh, little cube, using the little cube grid cards as leaves in the trees. So that's all well and good and I found 150 solutions and I will, uh, there'll be a link to that as well as something that is kind of uh, probably the most important point of this video is all of these positions, there's more positions that this piece can be in here, but these are all the piece positions of the violet piece with respect to the yellow T that satisfy the condition of, uh, oh, I wrote it down. That's terrible. It's like the one thing I forgot to write down. Well, it would be that it supplies one vertice and three edges or it can provide, what's the formula again? It can provide a face and, a, uh, well, it could also do a center and an edge and a face. So all 12 of these satisfy that stricture that must occupy these number in each of the each of the solutions. That's great. These 11, I can find a solution for all of those. This one, I can't. And I know I only found 150 on my own. And I just basically kind of, well, basically I was so confounded with it, I found another uh, a computer solved uh, table and I pulled it into a spreadsheet and I sorted on this part. And there is no solution for this part being in this position, even though it meets the requirements set forth here by Conway, Guy, and Burlingkamp in Winning Ways for Your Mathematical Place. So why would that possibly be? I mean, this isn't particularly ugly. I mean, I can, I can, I can solve this one. It's, it looks about as bad as this one does as a starting position. So let's just, let's just see if I remember one here. So I think that can go there. This can go here, and this can go there. Oh, forgot to put something under there. Maybe it's this. Yeah, I probably should have just had this one in my pocket before I decided that I'd just say, hey. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. So that's there. Let's get this out of the way. Get that out of the way. And this can go in here. And yeah, I'll 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 post the solution to this one uh, in in a web link. But anyway, if you can figure out why this is true, um, that would really be cool. And you would be collaborating to some degree with John Conway, one of the most brilliant mathematicians of the 20th century. Um, just some parting thoughts. 
So it's obvious that this is going to be a pretty easy one to build from because this piece isn't in the way of anything. It's down here. It's in a corner. There's the whole cube to build around. And that's true to some degree for these two. But then you get this one here where you've got this space you've got to fit under there. And then uh, similar, similarly these where uh, the violet piece is sort of, it has to be in there, but it's kind of in the way of freely applying the other pieces. Um, so I believe there was, I believe I found 60 solutions for this one, um, 40 for that one. This one, not many. I think it was like four. That's embarrassing. I should really, should have really had the solution for that one. Let's just try this one. I can't believe I can't just find this. Ah, there we go. Yes, yeah, so like I said, there's a solution for that one. Anyway, I think that it might have something to do with topology. Topology, well, everything has something to do with topology, but I guess what I'm saying, some succinct way to understand how this works. And uh, rather than uh, just a whole bunch of equations and uh, yeah, just this still just blows my mind. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, lots of interesting links. Look forward to some comments and collaboration.